All right, guys, this video is going to be a breakdown of every single formula you need to know for calculation questions for OCR A, A level chem, specifically for the how fast topic. All right. If you want to grab yourself a free PDF formula book, check out the link down below. And you're going to be able to grab all my free resources as well. If you're struggling with chem and you want to boost your grade as quickly as possible, check out my tuition offers down below as well. But regardless, this video should help you and put you in a good place to solve all the calculations you need to. Right, how fast? Let's do this, okay? So let's say we have a random reaction, and these we only care about the reactants in the rate equation, okay? The products don't matter. So we've got a mole coefficient lowercase, mole coefficient lowercase, and then these are our two reactants, A and B, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna construct our rate equation. All right, let's do this in red. R equals, I'll go through which each of these uh, symbols mean in a second, but I'm just going to write it out in one go. R equals K, concentration of A, M, concentration of B, M. Okay. So let's break this down one by one. Lowercase r is our rate, our rate of reaction. The standard units for this is going to be moles per decimeter cubed per second, because rate is just a change in concentration per time per unit time, right? This K right here is our rate constant. So anytime you see K, basically just think constant. Rate constant, okay? A and B. Now this is gonna be our concentration. Concentration of reactants. Concentration of reactants. And this is gonna be in our standard unit of concentration, moles per decimeter cubed. All right. Now, if you notice something, A and B, lowercase, are our mole coefficients in our equation. Is this A and B? No. Okay. This is M and N, just random symbols that are commonly used in textbooks and stuff, online notes, to represent something very specific. And these, this is referred to order of reactant. Okay. Order of reactants. So rate equals our rate constant multiplied by the concentration of reactant to the power of the order in each case. Okay, so you also need to know total order. So in a question, if they say, what is the total order of this reaction? Don't get confused. It's super simple. It's just the sum of or the total reactant orders. Let's say reactant one had an order of one, it was first order, and then reactant two was second order. That is gonna equal a total order of three for that reaction. Pretty simple stuff, okay? Now let's look at the units here. When I say units, I'm talking specifically about this guy, because the units of K will change. Units of K, okay? Now these, these, you can remember these or you can work them out on the fly. I would highly suggest remembering them if you can. Second, because there's only three to remember. And this is all related to total order, okay? So if it's first total order, second total order, and third total order, let's go through these. Total order, all right. First total order is just per second because everything essentially cancels. Second order is gonna be per mole decimeter cubed per second. And then third total order is gonna be mole to the minus two decimeter to the six per second. All right, so do your best if you can, just remember these, do some flashcard specials. It was gonna save you having to cancel and work everything out on the fly. There we go. Right, this is where things get a little bit juicier. We're dealing with the Arrhenius equation. Okay, so let's let's do this. K, again, our rate constant, we'll go through each of these variables, all right? Equals capital A, E, E is just our exponential, right? To the minus E A over R T, okay? So let's break each of these down. K, like I said, is our rate constant, rate constant, okay? Now, as you see, I wrote up here, the units of A will be the same as K, okay? So if you can work out what the units of K is based on the order of reaction, I should say the total order of reaction, then you can work out what the units of A are. It's gonna save you a bit of time, all right, rather than faffing around and doing it long way, okay? 
A is going to be, actually, I'm talking about A. What is A? A is our Arrhenius constant. Arrhenius constant. Yeah, I'm not going to bother putting the units in. Just remember that the units of A match K. Okay. E A, what is this? And as I said, actually, lowercase e, this is our exponential function. Exponential. So on your calculator, just chuck, hit the E button. You're all good to go. Minus E A. This is our activation energy. Activation energy. Okay. You're going to see it sometimes written as E lowercase lower subscript A or lower uh, capital lower subscript A. Doesn't really matter. Same thing, right? This is our activation energy and this is going to be in joules per mole. Our energy per mole. Okay. Our gas constant 8.31 okay this is going to be in joules per mole per kelvin and if our unit for temperature is going to be in kelvin for the 8.31 gas constant it has to be the same for temperature so let's actually write that out temperature kelvin whoops kelvin capital k okay so that is all of our variables in our Arrhenius equation. Now, you're often not going to see it written like this. They're going to take the natural logs of both sides, and it actually is going to be transformed into this. The ln, our natural log, ln of k, our rate constant, equals natural log of a minus ea over rt. Okay, we got rid of the exponential here by taking the natural logs. And the reason this is done, let's actually change this and make it red. So keep things nice and consistent. Okay. The reason this is done is because it makes it very easy when you get rid of this exponential to convert it to resemble that of the equation of a straight line. So converted to resemble y equals mx plus c. Now, you may look at this and be like, how the hell is this anything like y equals mx plus c? Do not stress. I'm going to explain it, okay? What we're going to do is I'm just going to write out y equals mx plus c. If I can find my pen. Okay, there it is. There it is. y equals mx plus c. y is going to be our ln k. Okay, that's our y value. And if you're confused why you do it like this, is because you're going to have to apply this knowledge to a graphical question within your exam. Okay, so I'm going to explain, break everything down and you're, you're going to have to go away in your own time and actually do some questions on this just to fully digest and understand it. Okay, our LNK equals our gradient. Now, what's our gradient going to be? What we essentially do, right, is we split this minus EA over RT into two separate um, fractions. So we split it essentially like this. Whoop. Okay, so what that becomes is minus EA. Look, look, I'm so inconsistent. I didn't even keep it capitalized. I'm going to try and do that. But you see up here, I, 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 yeah, what am I doing? Who knows? EA, and then this is going to be over R. And then we split the other fraction to be 1 over T. So you can see here, there's an, like an imaginary, let me, let me put that T back on here. Try and explain this because it does get a bit messy if you don't do maths. There's an imaginary one here when you split this fraction. So it essentially becomes one over T. Okay. That's a sort of how it works. That's basically how it works. Okay. So what we do is we split this minus EA over our T into our respective M and X. M being our gradient and X being just our X value on the graph. Okay. So what this becomes is LNK equals minus EA. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it capital, but just remember you can use either over R multiplied by 1 over T. Okay, then we're going to plus our C, which is our Y intercept. And this is going to be our natural log of A. Woo! We got through it. We got through it, guys. Okay, so apart from my inconsistency, we're all pretty good there. M equals C equals M is our gradient, good old gradient. So you're going to do a line of best fit on your graph or you're going to be given a line of best fit. You're going to do some um, calculation, you know, your classic y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or whatever method you use to find the gradient. And that's going to be your m value, okay, which is going to be your ea over r. 
your C is your y-intercept. So I'm going to write this down. I'm just writing these notes for you if you guys aren't sure what's going on if you don't do A-level maths. Or you should have done this at GCSE, I think. But basically, the main takeaway from this is that our gradient equals minus EA over R. Therefore, in a question, if you're asked to calculate the activation energy from the graph, activation energy, if you make this the subject, is going to be minus gradient R minus mister okay Woo. so that is how you would rearrange arrhenius now this is going to be given to you don't freak out about remembering this okay this is going to be given to you it may even be given in this format in the question it should be really but you're just going to have to be able to equate it to the equation of a straight line recognize which each variable matches up with and then output this final equation for the question Again, let's change this to be red to keep things nice and consistent because I'm the master of consistency, clearly. Okay, that is everything you need to know regarding the formulas for rate equations. Good luck. If you want to grab yourself a free PDF formula book, check out the link down below. And you're going to be able to grab all my free resources as well. If you're struggling with chem and you want to boost your grade as quickly as possible, check out my tuition offers down below as well. But regardless, this video should help you and put you in a good place to solve all the calculations you need to.